Bible on your phone, pull out your Bible. If you got your Bible on your phone, pull out your Bible. We're going to go to John 15, 18. John 15, 18. John 15, 18. John 15, 18. I'll just talk further away from the mic. Okay. Somebody want to read it for us? John 15, 18. What's it say? Okay, read it loud, Stephen. Uh, oh. oh. Hi. Can you hear me? No, okay. Read it loud. So everyone can hear. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. John 15, 18. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before you. So tonight's sermon is, why, why does the world hate God? That, that may be a strong word, the idea of hatred. But why, why is it that this, there's something about this world that hates God? Why does this world hate God? Well, there's several reasons. We're going to talk about that tonight. 1 John 5.19 says, We know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. The power of the evil one. What does that mean? You see, the Bible says that this entire world is under the power of darkness. This entire world has been really put under the authority of Satan. Has really been put under the authority of Satan. So what will you do about the truth that this world is not everything that it seems? This world has a level where it appears to be a great place, but at any moment, at any moment, tragedy can strike. At any moment, there can be sadness, sorrow. So, will you consider tonight that the world is opposed to the things of God, not just because of ignorance, but because of something deeper? Let's go to 1 John 2, 15 through 18. 1 John 2, 15 through 18, it says, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all, that the for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride and possessions is not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. So what are the things that, that mark kind of the world in a way that you could say uh, defines it? Well, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All of those things are things that will keep somebody from coming into relationship with God because as long as people are pursuing the lust of their eyes, the lust of their flesh, and pursuing a path of pride, it leads towards destruction. It leads towards enmity with God. And so why does the world hate God? Why does the world hate the gospel message? It's not, it's not because the gospel message is weak. It's not because Jesus is weak. It's literally because the value system of the world is opposed to the value system of God. We see in Romans 12 too that when, when God is at work in somebody's life, he'll say, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So those that want to conform to the world will have a enmity, a, a hatred, a negativity towards God. And some people will say, I don't hate God, but the truth is their actions show otherwise. Some people will say, oh, I don't hate God, but even indifference is a form of hatred. In fact, one of the worst forms of hatred is just total indifference, to just pretend like somebody doesn't have any value. In fact, that's what Hitler did with the Jews. Uh, he, he pretty much just said, oh, these, these are not human beings. He was indifferent to the, to the suffering that he was causing. So indifference actually is reflective of hatred. So when people say, oh, I don't hate God, but I'm not in love with God. I don't follow him. I don't necessarily believe in him. It's showing a level of hatred that's reflective of what this world is all about. James 4.4 4 says, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So think of that. Whenever somebody is living, living a life that's opposed to God and in, in fellowship with the world or the, the values of the world, it, it doesn't mix. It's like oil and water. It's like oil and water. When, when people love the things of the world, they can't love the things of God. When people are pursuing the things of the world, then it automatically means that you can't be pursuing the things of God. 
Let's go to John 18, 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I may might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from this world. So why does this world hate God and hate the message of Jesus Christ? It's because it's totally opposed to the value system of this world. It's totally opposed to the way that this world functions. This world operates through power, fear, and control. God's kingdom operates through love, mercy, grace, forgiveness, transformation. We even see this highlighted even further in John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. So why is this world all about hating God? It's because somewhere people love their works of darkness. And when God shines his light onto those works of darkness, it's a lot easier to run to the darkness and to run away from the light. The truth is the light and darkness cannot be in the same place. The light of God cannot exist where there is darkness and neither can darkness exist where there is light. So why does the world hate God and hate the message of Jesus? It's because Jesus is the light of the world. And as soon as you step into the light, you can no longer continue doing the things that you once did. Acts 17, 30 through 31 says, the, time of ignorance, the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And all of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Why does this world hate God? Because there's going to be a day where God judges everyone and everything according to righteousness. According to righteousness. And that is a scary day. That is a day that people... Most people would rather not think about because they know that on that day they will come up lacking and wanting and, and guilty. Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Why does this world, why is it so opposed to the gospel? Why does this world hate the things of God? It's because God demands that we make a choice. We can't be in a relationship with things that are opposed to God and be in a relationship with God himself. God requires a choice. You can only serve one person. You can only serve one thing. You'll either serve God or you'll serve something else. And that something else always leads to destruction. We even see in the Psalms, in Psalm 2, it says, Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, Jesus, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. There's a level where this world is in an opposition to God because God has all authority and power and each person that's in sin wishes that they could have that kind of power and authority and so they scheme against God. They scheme to, and make decisions and, and plan ways that they can fulfill their own desires opposed to the desires and the will of God. But let's end in 1 Corinthians 1.18. It says, For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to thus... But to, to us who believe, who are being saved, it is the power of God. So the cross of Jesus Christ appears... What? Oh. The cross of Jesus Christ is foolishness to the world. 
foolishness to the world. So to close tonight, we have to consider this as we're talking to people. Let's uh, consider everything that we just went over, that there's an opposition to the things of God, a hatred of the things of God in this world. So praise the Lord. We're going to pray and everyone start sharing. Is Bob coming over? Okay. He could be getting kettle corn or something. Yeah. No, he is. Getting kettle corn? Oh, coming? Okay. So everyone ready to pray? Okay. Lord, God, we just thank you for this night. God, we pray that you would have your way in this time. Lord, we pray for your anointing and your spirit to move on everyone's behalf, God. Lord, we pray that you would just pour out your spirit on all of us, God. And we pray that you would create divine appointments and great conversations in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Slavic, do you got something?